All right, guys, today we're starting to look at DS2, which is displaying single data sets. Follows, funnily enough, straight on from DS1. Um, let's have a look at what sort of things we're going to be looking at. All right, first thing we're going to be looking at is the types of graphs and stem and leaf plots. That's going to include things like radar charts, dot plots, stem and leaf plots, um, and stuff like that. Next thing is frequency tables and cumulative frequency. You will have dealt with frequency before. You may have seen frequency tables, uh, but if not, we're going to go through them and cumulative frequency as well. Next one is range, interquartile range, deciles and percentiles. Um, you may have heard the word range, but you probably won't have heard of interquartile range. That's all right, we'll go through it. Five number summaries and then appropriate graphs and misuse of graphs. We talked about misleading graphs in the last one, but now we're going to talk about uh, misuse of graphs, which is similar, but uh, just a bit more into it. OK, so starting off, the first one we've got is types of graphs. Uh, we're going to talk about radar charts to start off with, but let's go through the gunk first. All right, normally when you collect data, as we've already discussed, data is just data until you organize it then it becomes information until it is organized it is just stuff doesn't make any sense until you organize it most commonly you display data in a type of graph the reason for that is it's just nice and easy for people to find read and understand them okay we've looked at sector graphs we've looked at column graphs um, and line graphs and you can use the skill sheets that are in the back of your workbook if you need to or if you want to and i would remain, uh, recommend that you do um, in this section we're going to look at some of the displays that are of particular use to statisticians okay when we collect and organize our data we need to display it so that it's obvious to people what we're trying to get at um, these particular graphs are very quick and easy to use and make a lot of sense first one is radar charts very similar to a line graph except it's circular and it's really good for data that goes on year on year, like uh, weather data or sales data, which is the example we're going to look at. So what have we got? A radar is drawn with the data being measured, placed in equal sectors around the circle and the results having a scale emanating from the center. Sounds fancy. It's actually pretty easy. Once you've seen it and done a couple, they'll make perfect sense and you won't have a problem with them. All right, this information worked example one. This information below shows the sales in a department store over the year. So you've got your months down there in two columns, and you've also got your sales just there. So you've got six months on this side, and then the other six months and the sales. Uh, you can see, if you look closely very quickly, you've got 2.8 million there in January, and then in December you've got 3.4. So you can see the two biggest months, and you can have a look at it like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to show it in a radar chart. Makes our life a lot easier. So first one up here. This is what a radar chart looks like. Now, I've already drawn it for you. I'll just zoom in a little bit more so you can see it. So I've already drawn it. Now, in your think, what it says to do is draw equal sectors of 30 degrees. Now, it should be fairly obvious why you do 30 degrees, but if you're not sure, you're talking about months, right? And we have 12 of them in a year. And there is 360 degrees in a circle. Divide that by 12, we'll give you 30 degrees. So that's why the sectors are all 30 degrees. That should make sense. Uh, if you were doing it with 10 different things, uh, you would use 36 degrees. If you're doing it with four things, like a quarterly, then you use 90 degrees. Okay, so you then draw the sales from the center using one centimeter equals 0.5 million. That's pretty important. That's the scale. Basically, that's the scale that you're using. Just write that in. Okay, what that means is if we scroll across to the side, each centimetre you've got up there, so we'll go up a centimetre, is 0.5 million, okay? And it's like the horizontal axis, oh, sorry, like the vertical axis on a column chart. If you were going to 1.5, you'd end up with a column looking like that. Cool. And because I can't help myself, I'm going to colour it in. Oh, I've made a mess now. Doesn't matter. 
<laughs> okay, so that's what you're looking at. But in this case, because it's a radar chart, we don't actually color it in, we don't actually do a column. What we do, click, is this. Once we've got it drawn, you'll notice that we've uh, named each one of our sectors with our months, January. Whoops, I should go clockwise the same as it does. March, uh, April, May, so on and so forth. And then we put that vertically. Now you don't have to put the numbers on all of them. You should know that three is there and three is also there and there. In fact, it's on every one of those round there. That should make sense to you, hopefully. If it doesn't, check your brain because it's pretty obvious but I believe in you guys. I have complete and utter faith. All right, so what are we gonna do? We have to plot it now. This is where we just get our values and start plotting it. So for January, we were at 2.8. So you head up and go 2.8. Then Feb is 1.7. March is 1.1. April's 1.2. May is 1.3, June is 1.6, so we're just above the 1.5 mark now. Now you should do this to scale. If you're using a centimetre, then each one of these points should be a millimetre. So in other words, June should be 1.6 centimetres or 16 millimetres from the centre out. That should be 16 millimetres. And just undo that because it's messy. Uh, next one, July is 1.8. So that's 0 0.5, 1, 1.52, so 1.8 is there. Uh, August, 1.1, 1. 1. Uh, September is 1.6, there. October is 1.9, 2.5 is November, is that one, and December is 3.4, which is right there. Okay, so that's our points. The next thing you do is you join these using straight lines. Okay, so we go from January. Oops, that's a little messy. Let's see if I can do it like this. Oh no, that's worse. Oh Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. Let's try this. Hopefully it won't. Oh, that's better. Okay, click. That's good. Then we go from there. Oh, that's then changed back to that. I have to keep clicking on it. No, not that one. Sorry, I was just testing that. So then we go from there to there, and then from there to there, and so on and so forth. Uh, probably should have used a different color, but it doesn't matter. You can still see the dots. That's the main thing. Click there, there. It'll probably be a lot easier for you guys because you'll be using a ruler. You will use a ruler and a pencil. You will use a pencil. Try not to use pen when you're doing these. You will make errors. You want to be able to rub them out and liquid paper is evil. Never forget that. Liquid paper is evil. Okay. Now. At the moment, we're going from December to January and we're going to join those up. If we had another year, it's entirely possible that those two wouldn't join up uh, because you'd be going to the next January, not to this one. But that, in essence, is your radar chart. Hope that made a lot of sense. We've been going for about nine minutes. Um, you should be able to do that one all by yourself and that should help you for any of the ones that require uh, radar charts. Thanks, guys.